Hi, I'm Dr. Brannick Riggs, Vice President of Education at doTERRA International. And I have with me today the Scientific and Medical Education Committee here in Europe. And we're going to have a conversation today about Sun and the new Sun Care line. So Ruth, as we talk about the sun, and there's lots of different rays that come from the sun, the question is kind of what are they and are all of them harmful to us? Uh, well, I mean, uh, of course not, because the rays that come from the sun go right the way from you know, radio waves all the way through to your UV, gamma, X-rays, et cetera. Right. The longer the wavelength, the shorter the frequency, um, the lower the energy. But it's mm -hmm. the high energy, high frequency, waves that you get at the UV and gamma x-rays, et cetera, where you get most of the harm. Yeah. Now, most of those are filtered out by the atmosphere, but what mm -hmm. does get through are the UVA and the UVB, and those are the most harmful of the sun rays that come through, and we know that they can you know, cause all sorts of skin issues, um, including up to skin cancer. Right, right, so those, those ultraviolet rays yes. are really the things that are kind of most powerful yeah. that can affect us. I mean, there's UVC as well, but that doesn't get through in right. general. Yeah. Unless you're yeah. in the middle of the Arctic somewhere. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Alex, there's also this thing called blue light. And, and we are exposing ourselves to blue light more and more and more in modern times. Tell us about blue light, what it is, and where we're getting that exposure from. Yeah, as, as Ruth mentioned, you have this visible spectrum of light. Mm -hmm. And blue light is a particular range of the spectrum, 4 to 500 nanometer in wavelength. And this particular um, section of the, the light spectrum is able to penetrate the skin deeper. So it's more problematic in causing you know, photo damage to our skin cells, to the DNA in our skin. So, it comes from the sun, it can also come from devices, electronic devices, light bulbs, things like that. And so we certainly get exposure, not simply you know, because we're inside, we might be out of the sun, but we can still get exposure from devices and electronics and things. Many of us are sitting in front of computer screens all day, right? Or even our phones sometimes have that blue light and we're getting lots of exposure in those ways. And there's more and more research coming out you see about the damage that those, mm -hmm. those wavelengths are causing. Yeah. Yeah. So, Fernando, what does a natural skin care routine look mm -hmm. like, including sun care? Okay. So, we cannot forget that the skin is the biggest organ in our body. We need to give him love and care. So, the care that we have every day, the, your everyday routine, it depends how exposed you are to the sun or the other, uh, or the environment. So, first, clean it. Moisture it, hydrate, apply some serums, and important, take care of the skin near to your eyes. Very sensitive. And um, then sun care. If you are too much exposed uh, to the sun, even if you're going to the beach or going to the country, or even when you're driving, you have your hand exposed and your arm exposed. You need to apply uh, sunscreen and, of course, mineral sunscreen and if you do that routine every day at morning at night or during the day depending on your exposure you will take care of your skin yeah we've even seen photos of those that drive a truck or drive a vehicle yeah. for a living and they have. have one side of their face that's aged significantly yeah. another side that's less and it's simply to do that exposure right yeah and not protecting the yeah because yeah. The, the, the sun even if it's important for our lives it can be harmful if we don't take care of our skin, if we are too much exposed. Alexandra, help us understand the difference between a natural mineral-based sunscreen versus a chemical-based sunscreen and how there can be a difference in trying to get a more natural approach to our sun care. Yes, yeah, so we have on the one side the physical mineral sunscreens and they are working by deflecting the light rays um, with a reflection and dispersion. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the ingredients of this physical um, mineral sunscreens are mostly uh, zinc oxide or uh, kaolin or talcum. It's um, like a paste. It's because it's a powder based and because of that we all know them that you have a white skin. Right. And so they are working. The great thing is they are work immediately when you apply it on the skin. Um, so you can go um, into the sun um, in this moment when you apply it in your skin and if you use more than uh, and you have more from these ingredients inside your uh, physical mineral sun care then it's um, it's it's it's, it's more um, effective so the effectiveness is how much you use from yeah. this uh, ingredients I remember as a kid seeing people with that white nose yes. right <laughs> they just cake the zinc oxide yes. on the nose to protect it and and so you knew that okay they've got their sun sunscreen yes. on right never mind the rest of the face right, right. <laughs> for some reason the nose was most important so so now tell us what about chemical sunscreens tell us about that yeah um, chemical sunscreens are totally different because they are working with absorption so mm -hmm. they are absorbing the UV rays the physical mineral they are also work a little bit with absorption but the main difference is that the physical minerals uh, they are the ingredients are stable they don't change but if if we have a uh, chemical, th they work with changing. That means um, they um, make uh, from the UV light, they make infrared light and heat. And this is uh, the normal physical process and this process needs time. And because of that, we have to wait 15 to 20 minutes before we go out into the sun. Mm -hmm. So uh, they don't work immediately. We have uh, no white arms and <laughs> not a white face, right. but um, yeah, we have to wait. Um, the second problem is that these organic ingredients in the chemical sunscreens, they are not stable. And um, it could be that some of these ingredients uh, go in, uh, we apply it or we, we have it in our systemic way. And the second um, thing is that it can make um, the sensitization of the uh, skin. So it can make it, it can cause uh, allergic reactions. Mm -hmm. It's um, interesting that when we look at children um, and we see a lot of children with light allergies, 10% of the children we thought they have a light allergy, they don't have a light allergy, they have a contact allergy against chemical sunscreen. Mm -hmm. And a, lo a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. So um, for uh, my opt is for using um, mineral physical sunscreen mm. because it's safe with the, its ingredients. Um, I can use it um, immediately so I can uh, cream my girl and she can go immediately out uh, in the sun. And it's also a good um, water resistant, uh, a, a water resistant uh, product. Um, but nevertheless, if we are in the water or if we are doing sport or if we're sweating, we have to apply our sunscreen again, mm. yeah, that we have a better protection of our skin. It's just on, on, the, on the organic, the sort of the, the range of sun creams that we have available to us on the sort of chemical side has been a really interesting challenge from a toxicological perspective. Um, you know, we've only really had sun creams around for the last sort of 30 or 40 years, actually. Mm -hmm. And what we, when we first started testing them as toxicologists, we didn't take into account the fact that they react because they're exposed to the sun. So it's, been, it's introduced a whole area yeah. now where we have to actually do a, a whole range of tests specifically on these. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them we found out because of that are not that good on the skin. And that, you know, there's, a, there's a real dynamic about which ones you can use, what the toxicology is behind them. And also the environmental toxicology behind mm -hmm. them. These all get into the water and they start yeah. a, you know, affecting the coral reefs. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's you know, true. there are some really important elements there that we didn't realize. Yeah, and we had a lot of um, chemical UV um, sunscreens uh, at the Morgan with hormone like effects. Mm -hmm. They are forbidden now in the European Union, but. Um, yeah, so we uh, we know um, the s science is growing, and it's with time, constantly under review. I have yeah, to say, yeah, we have it constantly really new reviews. So, well, as Fernando mentioned, the skin is the largest organ of the body, and we know that we absorb about sixty percent of the things that we put mm -hmm. on our skin. So, when dealing with synthetics like our other sunscreens, 
it's a challenge, but with the mineral sunscreens, the beauty is that we absorb very little of that, larger yeah, molecules, et cetera. And it's, uh, and, and it's so interesting that you have on the one side something um, that have to protect you from the sun, but on the other side, it's photosensible. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. photosensible, and because of that, things yeah. could happen right. in yeah. our skin. Yeah. So Ruth, how can someone determine the most effective natural sunscreen for their skin type and level of sun exposure? Well, I mean, the, 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 so the, the, the main elements that you have to take into consideration are what your skin type is. And that's mm -hmm. it. The, the easiest way to look at that is probably just how pale or how dark skinned mm -hmm. you are. That's the best indicator of how tolerant you are of the sun in general. And that determines where your genetics came from. Right? Yeah, not large. Whether or not you, your, gen, your ancestors were exposed to a lot of sun or yeah. very little yeah, sun. Yeah, yeah. Also, your reaction to sun. So people mm -hmm. sometimes you know. You know, if you burn very easily or if you develop freckles or moles easily when you go out to the sun, that's an indication that you need to sort of put some high protection on there. Yeah. I think the second factor that's really important is the intensity of the sun where you are. I mean, it varies where you are in the world, how, you know, how intense the sun. There are indicators you can look up and see what the intensity is. And that if you're in an area where you have very high intensity sun, then you should be putting more protection on. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third thing is how much time you are spending in the sun. You know, if you're a lorry driver where you have the side exposed all the time, you might want to make sure you protect that side that little bit more. You know, so those are the sort of factors that you really make, need to take into consideration. And then you need to look at the, what they call the SPF, the sun protection factor within the sun cream itself as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say it's, it's, it's less important than people often think it is. Obviously, the right. higher sun protection factor, the higher the protection is. Mm -hmm. But just using any sun cream, and yet at, at, at a sun protection factor of 15, you've already got like something like 93% of the protection mm -hmm. you're going to get from it. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I don't think any sun cream is going to give you 100% correct protection. So, you know, yeah. you do need to wear sunglasses, wear a hat, protect yourself from the mm -hmm. sun in other ways as well, and make sure that you keep putting it on. Yeah. And try not to go out too often in the sun. Right. Alex, can you give us some examples of some natural ingredients that come from either plant extracts or oils that might be included in a good natural sun care product? Yeah, some of the internal compounds we can consume, they're almost like an internal natural sunscreen that are absorbing these light waves. So think of things like carotenoids, mastoxanthin, lycopene, lutein, uh, beta carotene, these things are able to help to, to neutralize those. Those sound similar to some things that we could find in like a product like Lifelong Vitality. Yeah, maybe a Zeomega right. soft Interesting. gel. Interesting, yeah. Kind of a reddish color. Right, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're powerful compounds um, and they're produced by plants for the same reason. Mm -hmm. um, topically, we have some options though from a, from a natural perspective to help us with not just the prevention of uh, photo damage, but also the recovery f from photo damage from the sun. Um, things like copaiba oil, frankincense, mm -hmm. myrrh. Mm -hmm. um, the non-citrus oils are, are beneficial that way. And we have fatty oils as well. So jojoba and avocado, coconut, carrot seed. Mm -hmm. These types of fatty oils are also um, not just protective of the, of the skin prior to damage, but if you have incurred photo damage, then they can help with the recovery. Yeah, some of that damage happens through the oxidative stress of the sun, right? Mm -hmm. So having some products that are high in antioxidants mm -hmm. can be extremely helpful at protecting and making sure that we don't uh, accumulate more and more damage. Right. Yes, like the um, resveratrol in the Metapower Advantage, right. uh, plants are releasing resveratrol when they have stress because of uh, UV mm -hmm. uh, light. So this is protecting the plants from it. Yeah, yeah. Fernando, how often should someone apply and reapply a natural sunscreen mm -hmm. to protect their, their cells from the sun? And how does this compare to chemical sunscreens? Okay, so uh, depending on the time of exposure, but uh, you should have your, renew your uh, sunscreen every two hours. Mm -hmm. It depends if you're sweat, if you're going to the water, then mm -hmm. you need to put more. The thing is, from the mineral sunscreen, it let, it, it, when you apply it, it acts immediately. Yeah. The chemical, because it needs to all the process be absorbed, they need, like Alexander says, at least 20 minutes mm -hmm. to take effect. So 
At the end, you have one hour, 40 minutes with the chemicals and two hours with the minerals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing that I love about the mineral um, sunscreen is that if, if you can see it, you know that it's there, right? And so as a father of children, sometimes you're busy, you're at the beach or you're in the mountains and you go, oh my gosh, did I, did I put sunscreen on the kids? You can look at the child with the mineral sunscreen and go, yep, I, I put sunscreen on them. With the, minerals, with, the, with the chemical sunscreens, you can't always tell, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to go over and smell them and that <laughs> smell that you're getting is actually synthetics mm -hmm. that they've put in there to make it smell a certain way and then you go, oh yeah, I put, the, put this on. <laughs> the mineral sunscreen is beautiful because then you can just look at them and, and determine that. So I enjoy spending time in the mountains, and uh, of course, as you're higher in elevation, you get more and more exposure to that UV, um, UV wavelength of light. And so this has become really a routine for me as I'm outside, um, as I'm sure it has for you all, as you've experienced the amazing benefits of our mineral sun care line and uh, the, the amazing product that it is. I'm sure soon uh, it will become a staple in all of our wellness advocates here in, in Europe, finding that how amazing this is for them and taking care of their own families and, and their friends as well. So thank you for lending your expertise to today's conversation and we appreciate it.